Hey, what's up, Stream Keepers, and welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, we are very honored to actually have Thomas all the way from Germany. Thank you. I'm very honored to be here. So before we actually go into the video uh, directly, I actually wanted to give a special shout out to Therese and was Francois. Francois for being the organizing committee for the North America stream competition in the US. It's going to be held uh, June the 10th and 11th. So if you guys are around the area, please remember to drop by and uh, we will be visiting there as well. That's, that's why I'm here. I wanted to meet you especially and some other breeders to see the different setups they have uh -huh. and to talk about the way they are breeding their shrimps. Right. Okay, so let me walk you through some of these tanks. Uh, these are some of my uh, you know, shrimp tanks, as you can see. Uh, the racks are all industrial made, but we kind of like do it differently in terms of the water water changes and water system. Uh, my dad actually helps me a lot out with this. So this one's on the right is the water in. Uh -huh. And then this one on the left is the water out. It keeps it very simple so that there is no clutter in the tank and keep it as simple as possible. How, how it's being linked up is through the filtration system. The raw water goes in and then it comes out as RO water and it goes directly into the tank. So instead of having the the true RO water, we actually use the DI where it goes directly into the tank. Mm -hmm. And then we, we remineralize the, the water inside the tank instead of doing it outside and then we put it in. So also, you know, the, the blue the blue valve over there, that's the discharge pipe that actually is being run through this pump over here. Yeah. This pump over here actually does the, the discharge of it and it drains, drains it out. So that's the whole idea is to keep the uh, system as manual or you know you don't want to get the, the floor too wet the floor too wet as well so it gives a very different experience in, in that sense the, I realize there's a very very big difference between rim keeping in Europe and uh, in Singapore the first thing is uh, you have to fight with uh, very very high temperatures <laughs> <laughs> and before you can start you have to find a room where to put the shrimp correct if you want to do it in your house you always get uh, big problems mm. uh, with the temperature yeah and the space and, and the space you don't have enough space normally yeah. you're very lucky yeah. that you found this space and you right. can do it other breeders we visited they all nearly had no space and i think this is uh, the biggest problem mm. to find the space right and to fight the temperature. So I think I agree with you in terms of what we actually have um, in Singapore, the challenges that we have. Mm -hmm. But in every country, there will be their own challenges yes, as sure. well. Yeah. So it's how we actually overcome all these challenges to actually continue on with, mm -hmm. with the hobby. So you can see that most of the tanks are with pots. Yes. Uh, pots and plants. Pots and plants. Uh, yeah. Keep it simple. Yeah. And they can actually breed uh, fairly well as well. So so I think that's the, the whole system and process um, is being done throughout the entire place. So we have one rack, we have 10 tanks. Mm -hmm. So we have eight small tanks and two big two tanks. Two big tanks. Yeah. So these are these big tanks are 80, 80 liters mm -hmm. and these are 40 liters. 40 liters. So these are usually the grow-up tanks as well. So of course, uh, it can be interchanged. Uh, these ones, they can also be bred for breeding, mm -hmm. especially if, let's say, we want to have a mass breeding program, then we yeah. will use the bigger ones. These are 40 liters, mm -hmm. 40 liter tanks. They are mostly used for selective breeding. Usually what we do is that we breed them and then after that, the babies, we will try to remove, remove the babies to the bigger tanks. Uh, so that it can actually go out yes. better. Like temperature sensors on top of the uh, the racks that it shows how how cold is it, the time, and uh, humidity. Mm -hmm. And also we have uh, flood sensors uh, being mounted across yes. the rooms. We have flood sensors 
and then this flood sensor actually triggers to the phone and then once we realize that there is a flood or there's an overflow or there's some leakage from, from the tanks, we can actually switch off the, the tap. weeks the last uh, three or four days i was here went much deeper than this short moment the viewers can see today right and there are some things i want to take home sure. for myself mm -hmm. uh first is uh, getting a very different setup to my tanks i got the feeling i have much too much plants too much plants too oh. much plants in my uh, my tank mm -hmm. and, and too much soil too much Plants and too much soil. Too much plants and too much uh, soil. It's much easier working with the shrimps mm -hmm. when I use a setup like you and all the other guys did. Right. And uh, this will be very important for me to bring it home. Bring it for my own. I will try to do it some tanks first. Yeah. Yep. Same way you yep. guys do it here. Right, right. So I think there are a lot of positive uh, advantage to actually yes, having that uh, because you you get access easy to, to net the streams. You can see the streams yes. nicer. Yeah, so there's a lot of positive sides in, in terms of having the, the clean setup. As yeah, and you have a very clean place to feed the shrimps and then you really can see them better and start with uh, selecting the grades. Exactly. So, Thomas, thank you very much again, you know, once again for taking time off your busy schedule to actually come visit us here in Singapore to actually see the setup. It's been a great three to four days over here. Yes. Uh, it's my honor to actually host you here in Singapore as well to let you learn and appreciate what we actually do here. Although we have a lot of challenges, yes. but we are always...